Hello, everybody. Green Effect Podcast Season 4, Episode 19. Holy cow. Well, listen, I took last week off. Listen, it was the long weekend. Honestly, I was not in the mood to do any sort of podcast. A lot. I actually canceled a lot of things last week. Uh, I needed a break, man. Uh, one would argue I still need a break. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it, I canceled the podcast. I canceled um, the uh, the Friday finale. I do a bi-weekly newsletter. That got canceled. Uh, people were off on vacation. I'm just like, you know what? I need a break. And I'm pretty sure, my, I'm sure my, my listenership and my readership is down on the holidays a little bit if people are kind of away. And uh, I figured, you know what? screw it. I'm taking some time off. There's nothing wrong with that. I find, I really find that that's something that I need to kind of figure out a little bit better. I think where, you know, obviously I became a broker in January, 2023 and being on your own, there's a different sort of accountability responsibility. I love it. I absolutely love it. I just need to learn to say, hey, you know what? It's not a bad thing to dial it down and, you know, take some time off. I'm just going to adjust my microphone here a little bit. So, you know, it's something that I think I have to learn to be, you know, a little bit better that way. And that's what I did over the Canada Day long weekend. I'm like, screw it. I need some time off. And you know what? It turned out okay. No one, no one kind of freaked out or whatever. And you know what, too? We also... With the, with the with the podcast, we've had some pretty awesome guests on in June. Like we had a killer June. Like we had uh, Scott Henderson was on, Lacey Morrison. Um, who else? We had somebody else. So, so we we had a bunch of people on the podcast. So lots and lots of materials. I'm, I'm still posting some of that. So for those of you who don't know, yeah, definitely the podcast is a big part of everything and getting information out to people and sharing thoughts and ideas and stuff like that, but it's also the shorts that I do. So if you don't so follow me on social media, you better. <laughs> SG Mortgage Advice on pretty much everything. And what you'll find is the shorts, like less than one minute videos I try to keep them at, I post them all the time on social media. So, you know, really this podcast has two parts to it, the podcast itself and then the, the social media part. And the social media part, uh, I had so much material. It was like, you know what? I'll take the weekend off. Not a big deal. But um, yeah, so that's what was going on lately. And and, and listen, it whew, it has been really busy the last few weeks. Like, I mean, really busy. Uh, I think some of the things, I, when I broke off to be a broker, pardon the pun, when I broke off to be a broker, I, I really wanted to create a different experience for clients, for partners that I work with, referral sources, stuff like that. And arguably, that's has really started to pay off in the last couple of months. I think it takes time. I think, and listen, this podcast is about family. What is it? What's our podcast? Uh, finance, life, and business. So <laughs> I'll talk about business real quick. You know, I think when when you make a bit of a shift, and I think when I left the bank, I, I very much took a looking back on it I took a brand and I took a value proposition and it didn't yeah it was ready to go out the door but it needed to evolve it needed to prove itself it needed to prove its value its worth and that's really where we're coming now it takes time people think and listen I, I think People think being a realtor, a mortgage broker, it's easy, right? Write an exam, serve some or help some people, sell a house, do a mortgage, whatever. This is a freaking grind. It is a grind. It's not for everybody at all. And I think when looking back at my journey now, it really has taken this time to take a brand that I think was really working I've rejigged it. I've changed it. Uh, um, I haven't reinvented it, but I've I've made it I've made it better. I've made it more, um, more. What's the right, susceptible is not the right word. I've made it more um, uh, fit better for the solution, we'll say, or for the business type. And I think I'm just seeing that now uh, because business takes time, guys. Business takes time. I have a couple of brand new agents and I'm telling you, they're learning real damn quick. Forget the fact that it's mortgages, just 
business takes time, right? It, it, what do they say? You don't make any money for your first five years because you're trying to build your damn business. And they're right. They're 100% correct. You know, anyway, I've gone off in a different direction, but anyway, it's been really busy the last couple of weeks. And part of it, I think, is kind of the evolution of my brand and my business. But then the other part of it is, you know, while a lot of folks are not very busy, I, I think combination of the business evolution for me and, you know, rates have moved a little bit. We've seen fixed rates come down a little bit. The Bank of Canada announcement in June was, it's like shooting blanks, man. It's like it didn't do very much. Uh, but it got people talking, which was awesome. That's what I've heard. The deal, a lot of the deals that I'm doing, people got talking about it. Like, hey, how about now? How about now? How about now? Right. So, uh, so that's what we've really noticed. It. Um, I don't know. I I know, and we look at a lot of the stats. We see months of inventory has just risen. I think in Waterloo region, we're over three months of inventory. I think back to back months for the first time in a long time, London, St. Thomas, same. They, well, they've been over three months for a while, but um, we're just noticing um, if you watch some of the stuff I post on social media, the listings are way up. Ontario is up way, up way a lot, <laughs> up a lot in just listings, pure listings, right? And we see this all the time where people hear the market's heating up, they try to get your uh their property on the market and we've i've seen this every year where the heat up starts and then there's a bunch of people who are just late to the party and then they their house just sits so they take it off the market so we're definitely seeing that right now and i will say this too we're definitely seeing realtors who really have to negotiate and work out deals i mean i talk a lot to, not to realtors not only realtors that i work with but also realtors on other ends of deals and there's just there's negotiation to be had like it is what it is right it's this business listen if you've got you got to make sure your realtor your mortgage agent whoever you're working with you know has that ability to negotiate if need be so anyway we're definitely seeing that we're seeing a lot of pickup right now um i, I think uh it has been very very busy in the same breath it completely died the day before the long weekend and it's usually quieter this past week the day the week after the long weekend but for me it was busy so whatever it is what it is i guess other thing to mention too i'm dealing a lot with people right now around their mortgage renewal like for real i'm not just advertising this a lot of people are coming up for renewal and i'm dealing with them and i think for the most part i don't know Maybe I'm lucky, call it what it is. I've seen some stuff where it's like, like rare, rare, where people are really struggling. But then for the most part, if people have planned things out properly, they've got the right advice the whole bit. Um, I think it's, uh, most people are going to be okay. I posted this on social media as well. If you have, if you're not getting it yet, I keep saying, check me out on social media. If you're not following me on social media, you're missing out on some stuff. Okay. Uh, but I posted around, um, I don't know if it's out yet, but it, it's, if it's not out yet, it's coming, uh, mortgage delinquency. So mortgage delinquency is up a titch and you got to remember, we're usually around 0.1 ish mortgage delinquency. Remember delinquency counts once you're 90 days late and you got to remember the stats are always six months behind because you got to wait 90 days for the report. You got to wait 90 days for it to report and then 90 days for it to report. Because I think they only do it quarterly. So um, every, all the data is six months behind. So if we look at the data right now, July, data came out recently. Mortgage delinquencies are up, I think, to maybe 0.2. So arguably January of this year was probably the height of the people not happy with stuff. And so if we're only up a little bit, that's not bad on the mortgage market. Having said that, delinquencies are definitely up on secure or sorry not secured anything unsecured loans uh credit cards stuff like that not a lot not a lot however when you take those numbers and you combine them with uh the fact that uh credit card balances and unsecured products are skyrocketing just the balance alone that's where things kind of like all right we're holding on for dear life right now we know household debt is high 
you know, are we going to see more delinquencies or are people going to maybe refinance once they get into their maturity date, assuming they've got the equity, right? I think if you bought a house, um, if you bought a house like beginning of 2022, you know what? You were probably going to be pretty tight for, um, for equity, right? You know, you might be underwater on your mortgage, which means your mortgage is higher than the value of your house. Um, but by and large, uh, again, I post this on social media, we, for the most part, still have a pretty good equity position in our homes in Canada in general. So understanding that, is this going to be as bad as we all think it might be? I don't think so. We are, we are definitely going to have regional issues. We're going to have folks that you're going to hear, you know, you're going to have, um, media is going to blow out a proportion, a couple of power of sales, which probably would have happened anyway. But I think by and large, you know what? I think we might be okay. But got to get the advice from a licensed professional mortgage person to make sure your maturity goes super smooth. Like, I mean, if I can only say that like 50 more thousand times, that is definitely important. Get that advice. I always tell those people, get at me. Get at me soon and quick. All right. Okay. So last couple of weeks, very uneventful with news. Thank God. All right. Uh, but it's going to start to ramp up. Now, we did have one thing that came out last week. And again, if you don't follow me on social media, you should. I'm making sure now I've, I've rebranded a lot of my social media that 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 bucket of work is now pretty much at end of job. Uh, and the one thing I start to do now, the day unemployment numbers come out, the day Bank of Canada comes out with their announcements and the day inflation comes out, I post on social media right away. Okay, so uh, just double check that as soon as the announcement comes out, just be there. It will uh, it'll be up on social media right away. Just sipping my coffee here as I go to the next one. So, all right, um, uh, unemployment comes out. All right, so we we ticked up a little bit to six point four percent. Okay, we were at six point two last month. Now. This is the highest since I think like uh, sometime in 2007. Don't quote me for all the fact checkers out there. Uh, but it went up. But it was kind of pretty much uneventful because all in all net, we lost 1,400 jobs. Not very much. In fact, if you look at the StatsCan website, it says negative 1,400 jobs and the percentage of the decrease was zero. Like... It couldn't even round to 0.1, okay? It's mine is 0.0, .0. <laughs> it's kind of silly. But um, anyway, the, so, the, the, so it, it did increase. Uh, but again, like I've said before, the numbers are, the, the percentage is important. You got to dig into the numbers a little bit, all right? And here's, I mean, I, I can break this down a little bit, but they're so inconsequential, like, we were down 12,000 jobs in transportation. Who cares? Public administration was down 8,800. Okay. I saw, a okay, digressing. Sorry, here we go. I saw a stat and it's something like we have one CRA person, Canada Revenue Agency. We have one CRA person per 44,000 Canadians. Whereas the US has something like one IRS person per 400,000, okay? Now, I don't wanna fire up the I hate the current federal government bandwagon right now, but what the hell, man? <laughs> like, those guys are digging for money. Anyway, I'm, so, I'm digressing. I'm sorry I'm digressing, but I'm just saying, I got my own little CRA pickle going on right now, and yeah, again, I know I'm digressing, but the CRA folks, they are digging for money. Like, I mean, it's it's almost like, remember when your parents used to say, or the, the old expression, go go shake out the the, uh, the couch cushions to get some money? I swear to God, this is what the CRA was doing, is doing. And I'm not the only one. I've heard about this from people. Anyway, I digress, but let's not digress too far. Back to the unemployment numbers. Public administration down a little bit, not enough. Um, 
what else? Uh, more people were employed in accommodation and food services, 17,000, and in agriculture, which makes sense, up 12,000 because it's the summer. Um, other than that, I'm just looking to see if anything here is like substantial. There is one substantially I'm going to get to. Um, but other than that, there isn't much more in the employment report. Now, the one thing that did come out that was concerning, and I don't want to get on to, well, no, let's just, let's just get onto this train because I think we got to talk about it. So youth, okay. Youth between 15 and 24, and they break out men and women, but let me try to get the exact number here. Students were down. Okay, long story short. Okay, I don't have the exact numbers, but because there's a, uh, oh, hold on. Here it is. Ah, here it is. Woo! Unemployment rate rose for students. Okay. Highest unemployment rate for students between the age of 15 and 24 since September 2014. Um, why is this a problem? It's a problem because it's linked to another problem, all right? Our immigration is not freaking slowed down, has not slowed down. What we are seeing from companies, well, now, you know what? I like to use examples. Let's use an example, okay? You're a company in Canada, all right? And you have two resumes in front of you. I'm going to sip my coffee before I make this point. You have two resumes in front of you. One is, you know, a 17-year-old kid who wants to work at your donut shop. You know, and, and you know, they're going to work here and there. You know that, you know, their parents might bug you for stuff or you might have a helicopter parent involved or they're a millennial, you know, or Gen Z, whatever it is. I don't know. Okay. And then you can, then you can, then your other resume is a temporary foreign worker right? Temporary worker from another country. And if you hire them, you get a, you as the business owner get a wage subsidy. I don't know how much the wage, wage subsidy is. It doesn't really matter. But you get a wage subsidy if you hire this guy. And you know this guy coming into the country, they got really low expectations. They'll work 40 hours a day if you let them. You know what I mean. I know there's not 40 hours in a day. Who are you going to hire? And listen, I know, pardon me, I know there's, well, you know, you, you want to hire the right person. We're going to analyze the resume who's got better work experience. But times are tough right now, folks. Times are tough, right? Who are you going to hire? The one that's cheaper and probably won't complain as much. So you got low expectations. And the one you're going to get a wage subsidy for, who are you going to hire? Based on numbers, probably going to go with the latter. And I know, I know that's a sensitive subject. I get it. There's our reality. We are there. We have business owners that are hiring temporary workers over existing youth in Canada. It is what it is. Okay. So, and, and I know... I know this is happening. I see it. I hear it. I know it's happening, right? It is what it is. It's numbers, right? It's not anything else more than that. But it's kind of crazy that you have this drop in unemployment. Like, who are you going to hire? Anyway, this is, de this is, I don't know, man. It's honestly, it's a, it's another log on the fire. Let's call it what it is. It's another log on the fire. Right. It's. It's sad, but it is what it is. What are you going to do? So anyway, that's one little point I wanted to bring up with this unemployment report, because it really it was it was completely not a huge change. Now, let's talk about what this really does for us. OK, because now all the questions is I swear as soon as this thing came out, I'm getting questions. Oh, what's Bank of Canada going to do? They're going to drop rates now. Yeah, just relax. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, unemployment rose. And remember, Tiffy Boy and his band of merry men need unemployment higher. We need more Canadians out of jobs. Because if you don't have a job, you can't spend money. 
very simple. Okay. Now, are they going to just drop rates because unemployment went to 6.4 from 6.2? No. Listen, we got another inflation report coming. We got another, um, I think we have another GDP right before the, before the bank account announcement. So we're not there yet. I don't know what he's going to do. Nobody can predict this at this point, right? We truly have to see what happens, right, with the other two statistics. Because he's watching that stuff, right? If GDP goes lower or stifle gross domestic product, if that stifles more, higher probability is going to drop again. Don't think we're getting a 0.51% drop in one, one swell swoop on one announcement the way he increased at half percent, a full percent, whatever, okay? He's going slow. I also posted this on social media, shocker. Again, follow me, SG Mortgage Advice, where we, we strip away just the mortgage payment increases as a measure of inflation. And if you strip that away, we're at 2%. We have hit, we have, we have hit the goal. So I know he's thinking that, but in the same breath, he's got to watch all the other stuff as well. Remember, he's got one job, one job, and he screwed it up twice already. He's not going to screw it up a third time. I hope not. He has one job, manage inflation. He has one weapon, one weapon. The overnight bank of the overnight lending rate. Okay. That's all he's got. He's got one job. Manage inflation and one weapon. You, you gotta you gotta up or down with the Bank of Canada rate. Okay. So he's gotta watch all this. And I don't think he's gonna screw this up a third time, I don't think. Right? And listen, he's gotta deal with external influences like JT and Disney Plus Lady and that freaking disaster going on right now. And it is a disaster, folks. Like forget. Party lines, liberal, PCNDP, those two are a disaster. Like, we are headed, what is it, three straight deficits? Like, what the hell, man? Like, it's not good. It's just not good right now there. So anyway, you know, will Tiffy Boy raise or drop or whatever? I don't, I don't know. We have to see the next couple of um, statistical categories that come out. Now, when we look at, um, you know, GDP, I'm assuming GDP is going to stay about the same. I don't think the last uh, Bank of Canada announcement lit the world on fire. Uh, when we look at inflation, I can't imagine we're going to have anything different, right? I'm, I'm expecting everything to stay status quo. Is status quo enough for him? Yeah, maybe. Because one thing we know, I'm telling you right now, the quarter percent happened, uneventful. Who cares? Nothing happened, okay? I think once we get to about a 1% drop, that's when wheels will start to turn in the real estate market. Okay, that is what will, that's when things will actually start to turn because that is significant. And remember, I'm going to remind everyone of this again, his prime lending rate decision does not directly impact fixed rate mortgages. Fixed rate mortgages are dependent, the rates on the fixed rate mortgages are dependent on the bond price. So, Yes, as soon as he makes a decision, does the bond price move? Absolutely it does. But his decision directly does not impact fixed rates. So I think to see significant market movement, we got to see the prime lending rate be down at least a full percent. And then I think stuff starts to move. So, you know, if he does another quarter percent in July, yeah, you know what? We'll get a few more people asking questions. Again, is it going to light everyone's world on fire? I don't think so. Not yet. But it's in the right direction. Absolutely, it's in the right direction. Right? So, uh, all right. I think that's all I got to talk about today. Uh, it's another, it's a summer weekend, man. You know, I got a, I got stuff to do because <laughs> it's nice weather. I um, wanted to make sure I got this podcast out. Um, we do have, just to let you know, we have a fantastic guest coming out. Uh, it will be, of course, virtual. And Slacker Steven here did not... Um, give me one second. I just, I feel horrible. I got to make sure I pronounce her last name right. Ah, so she's actually a social media person, right? And I'm like, I've got to have her on my show. She's... Towns. It is Towns. Okay. 
Madeline Towns is going to be on our show uh, probably in the coming weeks. All right. Uh, great real estate agent from Toronto. And she's just, she's on social media. She's so real, right? So we're going to have her on here. Uh, we want to go through, uh, we want to talk about what she sees in real estate. Uh, she coined the one phrase, and I'm going to kind of get her with this when she comes on. She uh, she posted a video. And for those of you who know, I mean, one part of our job as mortgage agents is to work with real estate agents. Uh, mortgage agents relative to real estate agents is very much B2B, whereas the real estate agents are B2C, business to client, right? They're kind of at the point of sale. So um, she coined the actual the phrase, uh, or she did a video, sorry. And she basically got on the video and was like, mortgage brokers, you need to do better. Stop calling me to go out for coffee and all this other stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm in love. You're awesome, right? So I've been following her. And then when I had Lacey Morrison on my podcast, uh, we, we I mentioned her. We started talking about it because Lacey Morrison is all about social media and stuff like that. And so uh, we mentioned her and then we tagged her in a post on social media. And uh, one thing led to another. And I messaged her. And I'm like, hey, Madeline, you got to come on my podcast. She's like, I'd love to. And we're actually going to do that jointly with Madeline and Lacey. And I will probably completely lose control of that podcast, but all good. I'll be the uh, I'll be the the mediator in a good way. <laughs> okay, so look for that episode coming up. All right. Anyway, other than that, um, that's the long and short of it. I'll stop there. Uh, any questions, guys? Let me know. And again, listen. If you are listening to this and you got a mortgage out there coming up for renewal at any point in time, you've got to get at me early. Let me get some planning done for you. Let me prep it. And uh, that way, when it comes up, it's pretty uneventful and it's easy to do. All right. That wraps up episode 19. Uh, thank you. Uh, as we always finish, keep fit, have fun. Like me, love me, follow me, desire me, want me. Five-star review, only five stars. Don't take the other ones. And talk to you soon.